the pick is in. We're just waiting for that chime to announce. Matthew okay. saying that Detroit can't possibly screw this up like the nicest thing. <laughs> just jinx him. I'm sorry, Daniel. Dog. Because I'm there's sorry, that Daniel. Time. You got to balance fits out. I get it. <laughs> so much credit there from Matthew Berry. But here we go. The selection is give it to us. Give it to us. It is. Where's the beef? Oh. Where's the damn beef? Big Let's fella. Go. Big man. Finally. Big fella. Big oh. fella from Oregon. Man. I just, uh, man, look, you have to love everything about this at this point, right, Mike? Like, you, you get your big fella off the board, the guy who has cat like reflexes at 330 pounds out here tackling DBs, like, he is the DB in the situation, right? It's, it's impressive in everything that he does. It, it, this guy won the Outland when he was 19 years old. That's mm. full stop. Like, right. he's going <laughs> to turn 21 in October of this fall. Panay Sewell is, as you said, and Phil pointed this out earlier. We were talking about generational prospects in some spots. I don't know if we've seen an open field offensive lineman, an offensive lineman get out on screens and decimate people in space the way that Panay Sewell does. He's a wrecking ball, and my favorite thing about him, I've comped him for Dragon Ball Z pans to Broly, if you've seen the movie, because he gets better so much faster. Turn on the 2019 tape. He was one of the 2020 opt-outs because of all the wonkiness with the seasons in the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. In 2019, you can watch him in between series. Make a mistake because technically he's still improving. He's still getting to that ceiling. And improve it in the next series. You watch him take this stuff in real time, internalize it, and then put it out and administer pain on the other end. This is, I know pe some people had Rashawn Slater as their number one. To me, you can't pass up on the ceiling. The guy already has a high floor. The ceiling's insane. I've heard it described perfectly where you turn on his film and more often than not, you're having to identify a lineman when you're watching his highlight. Mm -hmm. mm. Nope, nope. He stands out immediately. Yeah, there is, know, it is very special. apparent the person you're supposed yeah. to be watching on this rep, and it is Panay Sewell, like, just in a class of his own when it comes to that type of stuff. It's so true. You see every high school highlight, and they put the little halo <laughs> on <there. laughs> Panay Sewell is a human halo. Right. You walk in and you just go, oh, yeah, it's the one that just ate two linebackers' Correct. faces. In and it's still no running one, down the field in the process. No one more pumped right now than Jared Goff, who I know personally is so excited to get out there, start fresh in Detroit, get ready to start something. And now he has some protection in you front of him, right. and he's ready to go. You, know what? you won't see the grass this season in Detroit. As my friend Trevor Sycamo over at the Draft Network said, Panay Sewell is raised on a steady diet of kneecaps and pancakes. Dan Campbell is going to love this man. Man, they are going to keep Jared Goff upright, and that's going to allow them Sounds to find out be. if that's the quarterback of their future. Absolutely. Fitz, what do you guys think? All right, what do you think, Matthew? Well, listen, I love it. You heard Ashley just mention Jared Goff. Like, listen, Jared Goff has been a, an inconsistent quarterback so far in his NFL career, but when he's not blitzed, he's actually really good. Like, the problem is when he's under pressure, he has struggled so far in his career. So getting protection for him, and then you think about what Detroit at least has right now. Right? They have Anthony Lynn, a former running back, a guy that loves to run the ball at every stop where he's been a coach. They have DeAndre Swift, who a lot of people felt was, like, the best or one of the best running backs coming out of the draft last year. Like, all of a sudden, like, you're like, okay. Like, listen, there's still a lot of holes in Detroit. But in terms of what they want to do offensively, at least right now, in terms of what they have in Jared Goff, who's still a young quarterback, and obviously, like, he's just – Best player available. Again, that guy's going to be a rock for a decade. So, least. yeah, the Lions have nothing but time right now. Six-year contract for their head coach, Dan Campbell. I would imagine the same for Brad Holmes, our general manager. There's no pressure, right? You can take the best player available. You don't need to fill a need. Wide receiver is their biggest need. But if you view Devontae Smith, let's say he's at this level, whatever, make up a number. Yeah. One to ten scale, he's an 8.9. And you have Penny Sewell, he's a 9.9. You take the 9.9. And – you know, Gojo's more qualified to talk about this than I am, but, you know, some offensive line coaches prescribe to a theory of rather than, like, you're my left tackle, you're my right tackle, you're my right – best five. We'll get the best five out there. And in the case of Detroit, they've got a very highly paid, a very good left tackle in Taylor Decker. That's okay. Like, either he'll play right tackle or Panay Sewell will play right tackle, and you just have two really good tackles. Ask the Buccaneers how important it is to have two really good tackles. <laughs> yeah. Ask the Chiefs how important it is to <laughs> not have yeah. two good tackles, right? So, no-brainer pick. We like all these picks because we're only seven in. There's, no, there's been no major shock. But relative to value, That's a it's a home a run. Pick.